Hello, my name is Nicholas Hobble, and today I will be presenting my study, Increasing Calorie Consumption Through the Health Action Process Approach. Let's get started. So this project was an attempt to change a health behavior, in this case, my calorie consumption, by applying one of the theories of behavior change discussed in class. So for this experiment, I use the health action process approach, and I'll go into some detail about that a little later. So the motivation for this study started with the broad values statement. I value my physical health and appearance and not looking terrifyingly thin. Uh, so to translate that into a specific behavior to try and change, I said to improve my physical health and maintain a healthy appearance, I will increase the amount of calories that I consume per day. So a little bit about the theory behind this project. Uh, like I said, I chose the HAPA, the Health Action Process Approach, which was first proposed by Rolf Schwarzer in 1992, and it covered these key elements of self-efficacy in three dimensions. Uh, task self-efficacy, that's how confident am I that I can do the behavior. Coping self-efficacy, how confident am I that I can do the behavior when stressed. And recovery self-efficacy, how confident am I that I can get back on the wagon and, in my case, eat again, basically. Um, this model also included an acceptance of failure as an inevitability and planning for how to cope with failure. And it also included intention, outcome expectancies, and risk awareness as key factors. And I'll show these in a visual model in a second. Um, but numerous other studies have shown that this is an effective method for behavior change. Um, in different areas, different behaviors. So decreasing smoking and poor dietary habits, increasing exercise behavior, and increasing influenza prevention behavior among older residents of Hong Kong. Uh, so this is the visual model of the HAPA. And at three different points in the experiment, I evaluated how these variables were aligning with this specific health behavior that I was trying to change. And in general, I had higher self-efficacy, um, outcome expectancies, risk awareness, and action initiative at the beginning. Uh, and all of these kind of decreased in the middle when I perceived that I was struggling to meet my goals, and then increased towards the end as I was building my recovery self-efficacy. Um, but as the model shows, uh, barriers and resources were one of the biggest factors leading to disengagement or action. Um, so when I didn't have access to an, the easy high calorie meals, um, I ate fewer calories and was less concerned about my goals. Um, so the intention aspect of this is how much one intends on Doing the behavior, in my case, I intended on eating 1,000 calories three times a day or 3,000 calories per day. Um, and the action plan, well, I'll get into that in a second, but it also includes this action planning and coping planning. Um, so to go about uh, doing all of this, I first set graded tasks, which was just 2,400 calories for the first three days, and then the full 3,000 calories after that. I then set plans for action and coping, um, and the action plan was the 1,000 calories three times per day, every day. And the coping plan was if I missed eating 1,000 calories, at one point I would eat one of the frozen meal things that I had bought. Um, and I set timers and reminders on my phone as part of my cues and prompts. And then I tracked my calories in the Apple iOS notes app. And then also entered that into an Excel spreadsheet, which made it easier for analyzing the data and looking at the patterns. 
So what were they? What were the results? Um, I had a success rate of about five to 10%. Looking at days that I actually reached 3000 calories, it was one of the 20 days. But in meals that I reached 1000 calories, it was six out of the 60 possible meals. So five to 10%, roughly. Um, this is just a line graph showing my calorie consumption over time over the 20 days of this experiment. And the first two days I had made my goal of 2,400 calories, but then it just, it got really unpredictable after that. Um, and yeah. Then for my evidence, I have these screenshots of my Excel spreadsheet with the foods that I ate and their calories um, organized by each day. And then at the bottom of each um, day, I have the calories total that I consumed. And then for my other piece of evidence, I have a screenshot of my reminders app to show that I really did set reminders to eat, go eat and eat at 7 a.m., 1 p.m., and 5 p.m. every day. So the limitations of this study were mainly uh, in my inconsistency. And I don't know if that's just inherent in trying to change behavior, um, but that was definitely the biggest limitation to testing how effective this theory actually is, um, especially in maintaining behavior. There was also no real statistical measure of the effectiveness of each key construct, as in previous studies, this was um, more just using the theory rather than looking at its validity. Um, but some future directions for this study could be uh, if someone would want to give me money and time so that I have enough access to food to actually achieve this goal. But with that, I'm going to send it over to the discussion boards uh, to talk about this a little further. Uh, Thanks for watching.